Okay, good morning, everybody. Everybody as well. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the boost. We got lemon water this morning. I don't know. I felt like it was lemon water morning. You ever have that? That rarely happens to me, by the way, just for the record. I rarely have any morning that is not a coffee morning. Of course, we've had our coffee already. I don't, no one should think that we haven't had at least one cup of caffeine. I don't know. So, if anyone drinking lemon water, l'chaim. We've been talking about this concept of identity in soul. We're, we're leading towards something. As you know, we're going to be off in August, which is not easy, by the way, because I really miss... I'm, I'm going to miss these moments with you. You don't realize how much they mean to me. Um, especially when I get the in, the emails or texts or whatever it is, um, it means a lot. Um, so, but we're doing something. We're going to try to prepare ourselves for next season in a much bigger way. But we're going to be ending right around the time. Really, I think our last show is scheduled for right before Tisha B'av, which is sort of the low point of the Jewish calendar. We have high points and low points. Now we're in the time called the three weeks, which is really the time of year that commemorates destruction, believe it or not, in a way that we can grow from it. In many ways where we're leading towards in these conversations is in that headspace of the recognition in our lives of the identity and when that identity is with one that is infinite, or at the very least, one that is more, right? At least be more. At least identify with a team. I'm not saying that's very holy, but it's something beyond self. A cause, a country. Ultimately, to divine itself. When you identify with the divine, that means... You are, you are connected not to a group of people in a geographic region with the same colors playing one particular sport, not with people that are part of one country, not with pe We're talking about identifying with everything. Godliness is in everything. That means your identification. This is, the, this is high, crazy stuff. This is, this is life dream stuff. You don't just get it. The understanding that my, when I, my identity is with more than myself, it feels exponentially better. It is not a little bit better. But that also means that if I stop identifying with that, I will start identifying with the case around the soul. And if you need an example, if you've ever dieted or acted healthy, this is a perfect example. That when you're in exercise mode, and when you're in diet mode, you're not even tempted by the cookies. They're gross. It's Tuesday night. Why do we need cookies? You go to a party in the week, and you're like weekday. You're like, why is there so much dessert? It's a weekday. Like, what's going on? Because you've identified with something. A deeper piece of yourself, a deeper power in yourself, a deeper way of living. You know, it's very physical, to be honest, but it's something. Now, if that same person that starts to beat, starts to cheat once, twice, three times, misses the gym, wakes up three months later, they may walk into that same Tuesday night party and eat everything on the table, and they feel grosser. It's not like they don't feel gross; they feel. It's almost like they've given up. They resigned to the body. There's a certain sadness. A friend of mine who's involved very much in the area of addiction explains to me it's the same thing that takes place with people that are addicted to to destructive sources. They're there's a certain expectation of pleasure that these get, a dopamine hit in the expectation of this behavior, and then when it's done, this feeling of sadness. 
hopelessness of I can't believe that this is the extent of what I'm connecting to we don't realize it for other things but it's there when my life basically boils down to the things that I have and get every day if all I am doing is engaged in getting things in this world if, all, that's, if that's the extent of my life that's it look at my life it is entertaining myself feeding myself pleasuring myself going to places whatever pleasures I like doing that whether it's whatever it is clothing, food, whatever the pleasure is, my job is to bring it to me. That's my job. That's what I do. I look for more ways to find pleasure. That's it. I can Listen, pleasure is how we're built. We're built for pleasure. Pleasure could be very spiritual. And this whole world is filled with amazing things. We're not supposed to live and deny ourselves of life's pleasures. But when all I have done my life is that there's a sadness because there's a recognition that as much as I try to feed the body the body will always leave me wanting more the body is a limited source so even its pleasure is limited you ever get that once? you ever get that feeling where like you're pumped for a meal or for anything physical and when it's done you're like ah, oh, that wasn't as good as I thought it was and it isn't because believe it or not, what's going on neurologically is that when you anticipate pleasure, you actually produce the dopamine. And so your brain gets a dopamine hit in the anticipation of the pleasure. And sometimes the anticipation of the pleasure is more enjoyable than the actual pleasure itself. But the point is that at some point there's a sadness my whole life is just about my body and my body is never going to fully satisfy me and those that deepen those that look for things to do that's beneficial to others those that are on mission those that connect to more those that search for the divine those that are on mission they have physical pleasure sure they go on vacation they eat food they enjoy totally but there's something going on underneath the surface they have some fire that's kindled now to those who are living only in pleasure physical pleasure that is they look over and like what what why are you restricting yourself at all why are you doing that thing for why are you not indulging in that why are you doing why are you connecting but those that are having physical and spiritual unify they know that there's nothing there's nothing better they wouldn't trade it for the world you sit down with a family and this happens sometimes where you know someone gives them a speech about why would you have a family for it, it restricts your ability to travel and I'm not judging anybody but you ask that family if they would give up their family for more freedom I hope 10 out of 10 would say no I know I have less freedom but it's worth it there's a certain spiritual pleasure you give somebody you speak to somebody who's connected in a deep way to the divine you say give that up give up your Shabbat they never will they never will because when you confuse spiritual and physical you have more pleasure exponentially more pleasure than anything physical can give you and when you see yourself as a soul what you can accomplish, what you can connect to, what your relationships to, could become, what your relationship to food, to each other, to everything could be is so much deeper in its pleasure that it makes the physical pleasures even better, even though you may have less of it. And in many ways, this is sort of the beginning of this period of time that we're in, the three weeks where there was a time once where godliness was present in the world in a very real way and that time is, in the temple was the symbol of that and now we're not living in that time and our ability to recognize what we lost individually, collectively 
only allows us to want it more, which only brings more fire in our stomachs, in our bellies. All right. Please think about this. Go into your life and try to see if you can feel the difference between pleasure that is both spiritual and physical and pleasure that is just physical. Note the feeling of lacking as soon as you're done with a physical pleasure alone. And note the lingering depth of real deep pleasure. And see when they come together how awesome life is supposed to be. And identify as a soul having a physical experience. And not a body having moments of spirituality. And you'll see that you're infinite. And the possibilities of your life is beyond what you can dream of. And the only real way you'll ever find yourself is by pushing your body to its limits. Not just physically, not by running up mountains, but also mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Hopefully we'll pick this up next week. Living on a lifeline The world doesn't ever seem to change Looking for the sunshine But you're caught up in the rain It's like your eyes Are wide open but you cannot see You're watching life Pass you by like one, two, three Walking in destruction The winds of life Blur your vision All the devastation Forever feels like you're on the run It's time No one else can set you free inside and only you have got